Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here, welcome back to the channel and tonight we are going to do some collimation. Collimation which is effectively alignment of your optics to make sure that everything is square to one another to get really nice star shapes throughout your field of view or throughout your sensor. Now I am using Hyperstar with my Celestron C6 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope so I have a focal length of 300 millimeters but a focal ratio that is very fast at f2. So my uh, setup is extremely sensitive to collimation issues, even microns of uh, tilt. The method that I'm going to show is going to be using uh, two methods. I'll first use the star donut type of method to get a rough uh, approximation of the collimation. And then I will be using a bad enough mask or a tri bad enough mask that I 3D printed and we'll have a section in this video showing you step by step how you can design your own tri bad enough mask and send it uh, to some uh, 3D printing shop to actually print it or print it yourself if you already have a 3D printer. And the advantage of using a tri bad enough mask is that you can do the collimation while you're in focus. This method should work perfectly fine for a normal Schmidt Cassegrain telescope as well without Hyperstar and it should also be valid for Raza type of telescopes. So I hope you'll enjoy uh, walking through it with me uh, together today. The first step will be for me to actually achieve some kind of initial position for my uh, telescope. So for me it means I want to be able to kind of like change the angle of my camera here using the screws that I have uh, there. And so I want to leave a little gap around there that lets me like push in or pull out uh, the uh, the camera assembly to slightly change the angle. It is very much the same thing with a normal uh, secondary mirror kind of telescope where you have uh, three screws for Celestrons uh, until, unless it's diff change it's typically um, a Phillips head screws and you may want to like untighten them maybe a quarter of a turn maybe one eighth of a turn at, as so that you have like a position where you'll be able to tighten them or untighten all of them and change the angle as needed if they're all fully tightened then you can't really change the angle easily for hyperstars i'll be using like slices of plastic files to achieve an initial initial position for my collimation for hyperstar i start with uh, three very thin strips of plastic that i cut off um, from a uh, uh, plastic file and then I will tighten the pull screws there while making sure that the pull the push screws here do not hinder them so the push screws are still loose so now that I've tightened the pull screws here I can tighten as well the push screws and now we have an initial kind of flat collimation with some room to spare like a portion of a millimeter that I can push into or away from and that way we have room to really tilt the whole assembly like towards the telescope or away from the telescope so that's why we start that way just in case I've also emptied my filter drawer to do the collimation, we're going to have to select a star. So I'm using, by the way, night with near full moon so that I'm not wasting too much imaging time. It's the perfect time to be messing around with my settings, such as collimation. And I'll choose a star that's like relatively high in the sky, maybe 60 degrees or so, so that we have a good compromise in terms of the mirror flop that a schmidt cassegrain telescope can have, because the mirror can flop a little bit as you move the telescope across the sky, which will affect the collimation very slightly. And by having something that's roughly 60 degrees altitude it uh, it helps kind of like average out to have like kind of the sweet spot between lower elevations and higher elevations for me it's like always between like 30 degrees and 90 degrees so 60 degrees is the good middle ground I'll now also show you the process by which I uh, built this uh, bat enough mask I will put all links down in the description and I'll also put links to my own design as an STL file so if you have exactly the same setup as I do you could simply take that have it printed or print it yourself and then use that so see you once we've printed together that little tri of mask. You can buy tri of masks that work perfectly well, but you can also design them yourself and print them yourself if you have a 3D printer, or you can have a shop print them for you. There's tons of 3D printing services available these days. To generate the bad enough mask, I'm just, just going to go quickly through the steps. You can use a free website like this one. I'll put the links down in the description and set the parameters. We'll go to that in a moment. 
Then I'll show you how we can use another site, Tinkercad, which is an online CAD software, to make this into a 3D shape you can export and give to a 3D printing company or print yourself. And if you do want to print it yourself, 3D printers are amazing little, little things. They're getting cheaper and cheaper. My own is a different brand. It's a Prusa printer, but I'll put all of the links down in the description if you want to have a look. And it's it can be really precise. I've been able to actually uh, print and 42 threads and 1.25 inch threads that actually work uh, using uh, 3D printers. It, it kind of has blown me away. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the um, design of the bottom of mask. And you can see I have multiple parameters. I have the focal length, which for my hy hyperstar is 300 millimeters. And I have the outer diameter. And this is the diameter of the inner tube of your optical tube assembly right in front of the corrector plate because that's what where I'll be putting the uh, tri of mask on. I measured it at 178 millimeters for me. So to have a little bit of margin, I put it at 176 millimeters here. Then there is the inner diameter and the inner diameter will be equal to the, to the diameter of your central obstruction. And uh, for me, I wanted to be able to just slide the Batinov mask through my rising cam uh, camera, which has an inner diameter of 80 millimeters. So it's, I set it to 82 here, but it will change for you. Then you have two more parameters that are important, this one and that one, in width and out width. And out width is the thickness from the start of the slots to the uh, external diameter. And for me, I measured it on my telescope between the corrector plate and the edge of the OTA at around 11 millimeters. I put 10 millimeters just to be safe. And on the inside diameter, I just put three millimeters just to have like a little bit of margin on the inside. And once you're done, you can just draw the tri of mask. If the slits are too thin for you, you could always change this batten of factor to something like 100 and try again. And you can see it's quite different now. And once you've drawn your mask, you can download the SVG file. And here the SVG file is downloaded and now is the time to import it into Tinkercad. So Tinkercad, that free system, I'm just going to go here, click on import, and I am going to choose a file and select the SVG file that I just created. Here it is. And I will uh, set it Ah, we have dimensions here. Those are the di diagonal dimensions of a square around your, your batten of mask. So I'm just gonna put something like 190 because I'll be able to adjust the dim dimensions later. Uh, so a bit more than 176, which I know is my outer diameter. I'm gonna click on import and it's gonna take a little bit of time for the SVG file to import. And here it is, it is imported. The first thing that I'm going to do is using the cube here, I'm going to go to the top view so you can drag on the tube to change your view and I'm gonna click on top. And I want to set to a, a flat view so we don't have any weird 3D kind of a perspective what, while we're doing this. And I am going to click on the ruler icon here, the ruler tool, and I'm going to put it dead center here. Okay, now that I have it dead center, I can select my object and you can see we have the dimensions of the, uh, of the object. I'm not gonna change them right now. I am first going to change the thickness of the object. So let me drag the cube. You can see it is far too thick. And the thickness of the object is this figure here. This is 10 millimeters, far too thick. So I'm just gonna set two millimeters. And there it is, it, it is now much thinner. Our next step before we do it, I'm going to go back to the top view and I'm gonna click on these three hamburger lines at this stage. And that will basically center the ruler and all dimensional uh, operations to the center of the ruler. I am going to set this di dimension to be 176 because that's exactly the diameter that we put in the generator earlier. And this dimension as well to 176. And now we have the right dimension and we could already export this as a file and print it and it would work perfectly well. You can see I actually did this. I slotted, slided it in 
uh, through the camera onto the telescope. Uh, but if you want to remove it, there's nothing to grab it to. So it's actually difficult to uh, remove. And I had to use a screwdriver to do that. So that's not great. So let's add a shape to actually uh, be able to grab onto and remove this far more easily. And for that, I'm going to use the donut shape that I have on the right hand side here, a tube. Sorry, let's call it a tube shape. I'm going to go back to the top view, click on the tube shape, and I want to put it dead center here. Perfect. Now it's dead center. I can uh, first set the maximum number of sides onto it so that we have a smooth donut because smooth donuts are definitely more delicious. And then I can set the diameter of my donut. And I know that my inner diameter was 82 millimeters. And I know that I set three millimeters additional on each side, which makes for a total diameter until the slots of 88 millimeters. I'll set it to 87 to have a little bit of margin and 87 on both sides here. Okay, now we have a delicious looking donut. And if I look at it in 3D, oh, it already looks nice, but we need to adjust the inner diameter. We don't need to be super precise. And the way that we're going to use that is the wall thickness here. So I can drag this and make it thinner and thinner. And let's see, we have 0 0.272 is this thickness. I want to make it slightly uh, more thick. So 0 0.3, uh, maybe 0 0.4. Okay, and this is good. This will give me something to grab onto, right? We have two objects. And now I can actually select both of them using Control A. So I've selected all, both of those objects. I can click on Group here, and this will make them into a single object. And we now have a single object that is done. It's ready to print. And to print it, you can export it using the Export button here as an STL file. That's what I typically use. And you can provide that to uh, pre 3D printing companies. So let me click here. It is going to prepare the model and then save it an, as an STL file. There it is. And I can open it in my 3D printer software since I'm going to be uh, printing, it, printing it myself. And you can see I have it here. I'm now able to do the typical 3D printing stuff, which is you know slice this so that the 3D printer knows what to draw layer per layer. And now I could just print it directly. And that's going to take two hours and 20 minutes. And here's my final 3D printed tri of mask. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Seriously, 3D printers are amazing. I have now slewed to uh, Capella, which is at 55 degrees elevation, which is good enough. And you can see I have more or less centered it using the mount commands. And I can see it's a donut. And we can see that the donut is actually a bit thinner in this bottom left area and a bit thicker in the top right area. And so the goal will be to actually um, move the donut using the uh, collimation screws a bit towards the uh, top right so that the actually the shadow at the center of the at the donut would actually move in that direction as well and we can see that the cables here that I have on my camera we can see them as they're as those like black kind of uh, rays here and they tell me they're actually in the exact direction that the uh, donut is thin so it tells me that it's either a screw that is directly in line with them um, or opposite them. And for me, it is opposite them. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, pull in the, the Hyperstar setup. So use the pull screw by loosening a bit the push screw and then tightening the pull screw and see which direction this, this moves the donut. Let's have a look. I've done a quarter of a turn, so it's quite a large adjustment actually. You want to redo very small adjustments when you're doing collimation. And it so happens that it's in the right direction. The donut has moved a little bit. I should recenter it before I proceed, but I am going to do it once more. Okay, and as I did it once more, we are getting a more rounder donut. So let me recenter that quickly using the, uh, the commands of the mount. 
Okay, and here we can see it's more or less okay. And with a donut like that, that's kind of like the best you can achieve. But we want more precise, which is why we're going to go with the tri of mask. The before I do that, I want to focus properly on those stars. So I am going to move the focuser manually to uh, try and focus a bit more my star. Okay, and now we're close with manual focusing. I'm gonna do a quick autofocus run so that uh, we can get like proper results. Once we're properly focused across the frame, I will use the tri of mask to try and see whether we need to de do any more changes to the collimation. We're not done with the autofocus, so I've disconnected my camera from Nina because I need to remove the cables for my particular design of the tri of mask. And now I can insert the tri of mask after I remove the filter drawer because there's a screw in the way. So now I can put back the cables. And let me reconnect the camera. Cool it just for the heck of it. And let's have a look at the uh, at Capella with the tri of mask on. Woohoo! We see a nice result. So this is what this is the type of image that the tri of gives us, and it is extremely sensitive to collimation issues. And you can see that those we want the spikes to always be kind of centered, and those two here are not quite centered, uh, but that. But it's it's pretty good. I think the worst one is this one. This spike is not quite centered compared to the rest. Um, so we're going to try and find the screw that actually controls that. So I am randomly going to uh, screw in this one, for instance, because why not? So I'm going to release a bit the pulse uh, push screw, tighten the pull screw by a little tiny bit, and see what happens. Okay, it actually found, uh, so you can see now my collimation is much, much worse. The, the spikes are all over the place, so we should have not pulled, but pushed, right? So I am going to untighten the pull screw and tighten the push screw until it's very tight. And let's see what that gives us this time. It actually seems like we went a bit too far, so I need to be a bit less, more careful with my settings. So. Untighten the pull screw very lightly. Tighten the push screw very lightly, very little, both of them. And see what the result is. Ah! Oh! Ooh! Doesn't that look awesome? Like, those are almost perfectly centered. There's maybe this one that's not quite centered, but doesn't this look quite nice? Let me see if I remove the batten of mask. And so let me take a five second exposures and see how the stars in the corners look like. Recently, my stars in the corner have been like garbage, hot garbage. Uh, so hopefully with this manipulation, we should get slightly better star shapes. I'm not expecting miracles because it's still hyperstar, but um, let's see the image inspector. So let me go into the corners, zoom in. And yeah, the stars are a bit com comet shape, but honestly, they're vastly different than what I've seen recently. How about the bottom right corner? Same story, it's not perfect, but definitely not bad. Bottom left corner, I think it's more or less the same story. And top left corner, uh, it's not bad either. So I'm going to take a 30 second exposures with the light off just to see how that looks like and and then we'll call it a day with the collimation. Okay, now we have the same results with fewer shadows and four pixel peepers out there. So center looks fine. I'm not going to zoom in too much because I zoom like to, to what I would see on a stacked image and Honestly, in the corners, they're not perfect, but those stars look pretty decent. I love this. I love this. I love this. <laughs> so you can see the power of this tri of mask. Now, 
Could the result be even better if I spent even more time on collimation? Absolutely, the tribatinoff still showed a little bit of imperfection, but that's fine. And could you build your own Batinoff mask as well? Yes, we saw it in the video and it's absolutely cool and amazing and I highly recommend getting a 3D printer because they're so useful. I love those things. And really, I want to also say that it is thanks to my Patreons and my channel members that I was able to buy a 3D printer, that I'm able to make those videos. And I want to thank you so, 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 so much. So for everyone watching the video, thank you so much as well for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment about your methods for collimation. And, and you know, like the video or dislike it if you didn't like it, but really it will help me out, help the channel out and really propagate this video to help others achieve perfect collimation with their schmidt cassegrain telescope and with their Hyperstar or Raza type of telescopes where collimation is really, really tough to achieve using this simple tool that they can print themselves. I still cannot get over it. So as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars or the full moon these days. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.